what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Cherry OS version 3.4 official on this particular device and this is very very interesting let me show you why this Cherry OS update includes the G apps of course and it also has the ANX camera so this is one of those ROMs which includes ANX camera based on Android 12 so that is just amazing in my frank opinion also it has the safety net and stuff working super fine so I'll show you everything but first of all, let me show you the about section over here. By the way, if you want to flash this from, you can check out the flashing guide from the description. Also, let me tell you, I have used the latest Orange Fox stable recovery for this particular Redmi Note 7 Pro. And here I have flashed the ROM with the Fcrypt version 3 and that worked super fine. My storage is decrypted in the Orange Fox recovery. So here in the Android version section, we have the Cherry OS logo on top and the Android version shows as Android 12. The Cherry OS version 3.4 here it shows the maintainers names are mentioned over here, Karthik and Madhav. So huge thanks to the maintainers or the developers of this ROM for this amazing experience of this ROM. And the security patch here is of latest February 5th, 2022. So this is already February. So yeah. And here we have the build date. This is the 19th February 2022 build. The stock kernel here is the Litten GD 4.14 kernel. By the way, this is how the home screen looks like. It looks pretty beautiful, I would say. And the widgets and stuff should be working great. As you can see the Android 12 widget I have added. But let me show you which launcher is this. This is the pixel launcher, by the way. If you go into the settings, you won't find much things. As you can see, this is how it looks like in the settings panel. We have the suggestion disabling option and stuff, but there is no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen. You don't get those in the pixel launcher. So that's how it is. But to the left of the home screen, we have the Google's discover page. Yes, it feels a little bit sluggish sometimes. But yeah, once it loads, it's fine as you can see right now. So swiping up gets to the app drawer. This is totally working fine. You can search for any particular apps if you want to. And let me show you a few more things. The quick setting panel, you can just bring by swiping down on anywhere in the home screen as you can see like this. And talking about the quick setting panel, if you expand it, this is how it looks like. You can edit and add even more toggles. A plethora of toggles are there and you can add any of them. I have added the internet, then the Bluetooth flashlight, auto loaded, battery saver, the dark theme, and the screen recorder is also there. With the screen recorder, you can have the device audio and the microphone audio recording at the same time. No issues with that. Also, we have the always on display. You can turn it on or you can turn it on for the charging. So yeah, AOD, you can toggle from right here. And we have the hotspot, the do not disturb, the data saver and sound toggle as well. The night light is working fine and the heads up, screenshot, etc. toggles. And if I swipe to the right, we have the home controls. This is for the smart Google Home devices. And the FPS counter is also there. As you can see right here, you can see the FPS of the screen. And this is totally working fine, as you can see. And we have the reboot toggle right there. So if you tap and hold on that, you can directly reboot to the recovery from right here. Also, we get the brightness slider looks like this and you can have the brightness slider disabled if you don't like it on the like shorter quick setting panel just like this if you don't want it here you can disable it from the customization section but yeah we also have a auto brightness kind of button and we have this edit button on the quick setting panel and the power button and here as you can see this is how the power menu looks like we also have the advanced reboot you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here again and we have the settings option from right here of course and this is how the settings panel looks like which i'll show you later on everything in the settings but first let me talk about the anx camera yes you get the anx camera right out of the box over here that is just insane i would say in android 12 so this is amazing even on k20 pro i think we don't have a rom which comes with the anx camera based on android 12 as of right now but the redmi note 7 pro already has it so that's just amazing in the video settings we have up to 4k 30 fps so everything is there as you can see 4k 30 fps options and stuff are there even the pro photo shooting option is there but the 48 megapixel mode i think is not working over here but that's just fine in my frank opinion the portrait photos and stuff should be working no can't connect to camera it shows let me just close it so portrait may be buggy but otherwise you can use the camera normally let me switch to the front camera so as you can see the front camera is working and let's take a picture so after taking this picture, let me show you. Yes, as you can see, the photo came out to be good enough, I would say. So no issues with the front camera selfies, but portrait may not work over here. And in the info, as you can see, this is a 13.2 megapixel photo here it shows. Let me go back. Also, we have the night mode and stuff. So portrait again, as you can see right now, the portrait mode is working. So maybe that was a bug. 
So yeah, the portrait pictures are also working fine as you are noticing the background is completely blurred and stuff. So yeah, portrait pictures should also work if you give time enough time to process as you can see this is to a 13.2 megapixel photo. So yeah, the portrait pictures are working. I was wrong. I wrongly said that portrait is not working, but it is working super fine. And if you swipe up just like this, I have enabled this one. The 48 megapixel mode is there, then the slow motion option is there. And slow motion also should be working fine in 720p 120fps or 1080p 120fps. The short video option is also there as you can see. But I think if you take a 48 megapixel photo, it may not work. Let me just take one quickly. Let's give it some time. So as you can see, this is a 2.8 megapixel photo. So the 48 megapixel photo is not working. But otherwise with the back camera with normal pictures it works. So if I take a normal photo and if I click on it and go into the info. So as you can see this is a proper 12 megapixel photo. So yeah normal pictures are working fine except 48 megapixel. Everything should be working fine including the portrait mode pictures. Of course the rear camera portrait is not working but the front camera portrait should be working super fine here. As you can see if I switch to the front camera now and if I go into the portrait right now it, the portrait mode is working but if I switch to the rear camera just notice the camera will force close or it says can't connect to camera. So yeah rear camera portrait pictures are not working but front camera portrait should be working great here. So this is again amazing that we get the ANX camera right out of the box over here and it will make a huge difference for a lot of people who uses ANX camera on their devices or MIUI camera. So here in the cherry settings, you will find amazing amount of customizations as you can see. So you have the status bar, quick setting, themes, buttons, every customization that we will ever wish for. And in the status bar, let me show you one by one. We have the double tap to sleep, the clock settings and the traffic indicator and stuff. The Volti and view Wi-Fi icon both should be customizable and you can just scroll between these bars to actually customize them once you have a sim card i don't have a sim card in the device so you don't see it but volte calling and stuff should be working great no issues whatsoever with that and we have the roaming indicator then the combined signal and the status bar items you can also enable the headset bluetooth etc icons from right here and we have the battery settings right here and you can have the battery icon style you can have the circle dotted circle then the icon right or left i've been using it with the icon r that's why it looks like this and pretty much it looks beautiful I would say and then we have the battery percentage inside or outside the icon and we have the battery bar enabling option you can customize that too. Let me go back from the status bar to the quick setting panel here we have the battery estimates and the edit icon and stuff lunar calendar is also there and we have the mic and camera privacy indicators location privacy indicator then the brightness slider customization which I talked about earlier so you can have the brightness slider disabled on the short quick setting panel or you can enable it just like this as I have done. And we have the quick pull down, then the quick setting footer warnings and stuff. Let me go back to the themes here. We have the black theme and the custom colors and stuff. And we have the dark theme as well over here. Of course, Monet theme engine is working super fine. And the accent color is dependent on the wallpaper that you are using. And inside dark theme, let me actually show you. We have the schedule option again. And the headline and body fonts are there. And it actually shows how the fonts will look. As you can see, plethora fonts are there and you can choose from them. Then we have the icon packs. And you can see the icon packs too over here also we have the icon shapes right here you can choose from and we have the signal icon styles also we have the wi-fi icon styles too so a lot of customizations here in the buttons we have the reorient then the volume steps and the layout changing option and stuff and we also have the animations here we have the animation style duration interpolator etc and we have the lock screen customization we have the double tap to sleep always on display scheduling option and the ripple effect then the four small clock and the lock screen charging info also shows up while charging so that is just great let me go back to the power menu here we have the advanced reboot enabling option then we have the notifications here we have the in-call vibrations then the blink flashlight for incoming call and also we have the battery charging light in dnd and the music ticker and the heads up you can disable from right here we have the make heads up less annoying and the toast app icons and we have the misc settings from here you have the brightness control then the charging animation and stuff in the full screen apps etc unlimited google photo storage also we have the higher quality streams for amazon prime or netflix or hotstar i guess and we have the use burn in protection as well and you have the interval of shift and stuff this is basically for amulet displays this is not needed for ips display but it's fine the feature is there and for this brightness control you can just slide a finger on the status bar to actually adjust the brightness and i feel this is a very handy feature in my frank opinion
Let's just go back and going into the system, we will find the gestures and the thermal profiles and stuff. So in the thermal profiles, let me show you, you can choose per apps thermal profile from right here. And I have changed this and to do benchmark and stuff thermal profiles to the benchmark, or you can choose for streaming or something like that for YouTube apps and stuff. And this is actually working great. And in the gestures, we have the quick tap, then the quickly open camera. Then also we have the system navigation gestures. In the settings, we have the left edge, right edge customization. Also, we have the pill length changing option and the advanced gestures are also there. So you can have the extended swipe actions customizable. And we have the swipe to invoke assistant. So if you swipe up from the corners, let me show you. Okay, so right now, as you can see, Google Assistant is working. So as you can see, the voice trigger is disabled for the Google Assistant, which is kind of weird. But of course, you can just anytime swipe from the corners and that will bring you the Google Assistant. We also have the two button and three button navigations and we have the quick tap that I didn't show you, but let me show you this now. So take a screenshot option is there and we have the stronger taps option. Let me just try this. So as you can see, it actually like works fine. It takes a screenshot. It has the edit and delete option. Also, if you are in some apps like the Play Store. So if I double tap, as you can see, even there is a capture mode option and the quick tap is working flawlessly over here while back tapping. So you can actually customize that for accessing your digital assistant and the play or pause media and the recent apps and the show notification and stuff. All these options you can choose from. And we have the toggle flashlight too, which is disabled because the quickly open camera is on, I guess. If I disable that right now, as you can see, the toggle flashlight is there and we have the one handed mode, then the press and hold power button option is there for assistant or stuff like that. Then we have the swipe to screenshot. Of course, the three finger swipe to actually take a screenshot is also there with the quick tap option. It works too, but yes, we also get the swipe to take screenshot. The double app to check phone is there. Then the prevent ringing and stuff. All these options are there. So again, huge amount of customizations are there. Also, we get the live translate feature. If you want to use that, the default keyboard over here is Gboard. Inside security, we don't have many things like the face unlock or stuff like that are simply missing as of right now, even no app lock is present. And in the settings of this, we have the quick unlock lock and the scramble pin layout and stuff power button instantly locks and stuff is there so right now let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed i'll just double tap on the status bar to make the phone sleep and right now if i tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it unlocks let me try with the always on display turned on and right now if i double tap as you can see this is how the always on display looks like and if i tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it unlocks as you can see the unlocking speed is very very fast and it is a very reliable experience in my frank opinion. And it also does that animation if you enable that from the customization settings. So as you can see, the device is locked right now. And if I tap the fingerprint scanner and as you can see, it has unlocked. So this is how fast the fingerprint scanner works. No issues whatsoever that I have found with the fingerprint scanner. Now inside wallpapers and styles, this is what it looks like. And you can change the wallpapers from right here. We have the basic color changing option. Then also the dark theme option is there. And the themed icons you can enable or disable from right here. Also we have the grid option. You have up to five by five grid that works fine. Let me go back to the display settings. And here we have the brightness level, the adaptive brightness, the extra dim feature is also there. And if you enable that, as you can see, the screen goes really, really dim. So this is a pretty handy and you can have all these keep on after device restart and stuff, extra dim shortcut, intensity of the dim. So you can customize it very much. Also, we have the adaptive brightness enabling option again. And inside live display, we have the color calibration. You can change the RGB of the screen and it actually does change as you can see. So yeah, you can change the RGB of the screen from right here. We have the reading mode as well, which will make the display black and white, I guess, or grayscale. And we have the lock screen settings. Here we have the always show time and info and stuff. Then we have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes. The dark theme, again, you can enable it from right here. We have the display size, the font size, etc. The night light you can enable and the colors are set to adaptive. You can put it to boosted or something like that. And we also have the auto rotate screen option. Then the prevent accidental wake up or the pocket detection is there. The double tap to wake is also working fine. Let me show you if I didn't show you that. So as you can see, if I double tap on the lock screen, it actually wakes up. If I double tap again, it goes to the sleep mode right here. And it works flawlessly even when the always on display is turned off. Wake up on plug, you can enable or disable from right here. Display cutout, you can customize. And there is the ambient display customizations too, if you want to enable that. Now in the battery settings, this is how it looks like. It doesn't show you much information like the charging cycle or stuff like that. But yeah, you can see the battery usage from right here. But let me show you with the Aku battery up, which I have tested with. 
and with this Aku battery app, I have tested the fast charging and stuff. Yes, 18 watt fast charging is working flawlessly here. No issues that you will find with the 18 watt fast charging. Also, if you are talking about the screen on time, here I have got average of about five hours of screen on time. As you can see, it shows about four hours and 55 minutes. But let me tell you, the Redmi Note 7 Pro is a very old device. It has almost two and a half or more than that years of life. The same original battery that I have over here so yeah with the original battery it is right now giving a little bit less battery life but yes i would say you can get definitely about five hours of screen runtime over here and which is good on a android 12 rom it can even last you like five and a half hours of screen runtime if you use the battery saver of android 12. inside sound and vibration we have this media volume called volume etc and we have the do not disturb and stuff the volume panel timeout is also there and right now let me show you this is how the volume panel looks like we also have the live caption kind of mode and we can put the phone into vibrate or silent from right here and we also have the default notification sound and stuff the charging sound charging vibration touch sound etc you can enable or disable the dry tones options are also there and of course the ringtone notification extra volumes you can change and inside me sound enhancer this is the me audio dirac and once you enable that let me show you you have the youth edition and stuff and all these other presets that you can use for wired headsets and let me tell you the sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well was amazing over here even the choose preset option is there we also get the bass booster option now if you are wondering about the sensors or some like nifty little things let me show you the ir buster of the device is working perfectly fine if i show you this from right here if you are noticing this ir buster sensor is blinking so that simply means the IR Blaster is working perfectly great over here. Also, the Rear Man 4 shows as L1 over here, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p without any issues. Also, the safety net passes right out of the box here, so you can use banking apps on this ROM right out of the box. You don't have to flash Magisk or use any Magisk module or stuff like that. So this is amazing again that you get the banking apps working right out of the box on this particular ROM. So in terms of performance, I didn't see much issues over here. The performance was good enough, but coming from much higher end devices like the K20 Pro or the Redmi Note 10 Pro, it definitely feels a little sluggish looking at the 60 FPS or 60 Hz display. But yeah, the performance was decent and this is how the recent panel and stuff looks like. You have the screenshot select option and you can go into the split screen mode if you tap here. By the way, talking about the performance here are the Android and Geekbench score with the CPU stress test on this particular build of Cherry's OS. So thank you so much for watching this video guys on the Cherry's OS version 3.4. This was my review about the Cherry's OS version 3.4 on the Redmi Note 7 Pro. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think about this particular ROM. I feel this is one of the most customizable, one of the best ROMs that you can flash on the Redmi Note 7 Pro right now if you want Android 12 with a lot of customization and the Anix camera as well comes right out of the box. That is just insane. Also the looks and feel of this particular ROM is just amazing. The always on display is there and yeah, the animations again just looks amazing while unlocking or something like that. Even while charging, the animation looks amazing. So yeah, in my frank opinion, this is one of the best ROMs that you can flash on the Redmi Note 7 Pro right now based on Android 12. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off again. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.